uh, now that YouTube came up with this new feature of playing back videos in higher quality, so I'm just going to try um, making a video with uh, higher quality, higher resolution, and we'll see if uh, YouTube decides to actually make it, uh, give it the possibility of playing in higher quality so we could fit in a lot more text inside of these videos and still uh, hopefully be readable and clear when you play it back with higher quality. But just in case it doesn't turn out to be so clear, so I'm just gonna make this another rap video if you don't mind, uh, though I've already made six of them at this point. Uh, couldn't hurt to make another one. So the first thing I want to bug you about again is about testing and trying out everything you've learned so far practice it all out, test it all out, see what works, what doesn't work, just keep on trying and practicing. In theory, what you should really do is something like something like a chart in which you have a parallel of columns and rows with all the concepts and stuff that we learned so far in C++. Like, uh, we learned about integers and the for loop and arrays and stuff like that, and then you have the same concepts in the rows as well, and basically something like this. And then you should go ahead and compare and think about all sorts of combinations of stuff you can possibly code in C++. So for example, uh, when you think about the concept of combining integers with the for loop, well that is uh, simple enough. We've done that a few times. When we made a for loop, we created an integer variable in the for loop. So this is not such a big realization that, wow, I could use the for loop with integers. But when you continue moving on around this chart, you're gonna find a whole bunch of weird combinations which you probably never thought would be possible. Like, who knows what, using arrays as a parameter being passed into a, into a function, or using the for loop to help you uh, easily do stuff on arrays, or combining the idea of making a class with the plus plus op, or whatever. All sorts of these weird combinations involving two or more concepts that we learned so far in the videos. I'm not saying you should actually get down and type up this whole grid because you're gonna have a grid which has like 10,000 columns with 10,000 rows. I'm just saying that in theory there are so many combinations of stuff you can do with the concepts we learned so far in C++ that you viewers probably don't even realize and it would really take too long to go through all of these combinations in the videos and explain how I would use the for loop to easily take care of an array especially when using the plus plus operator and all the rest of the millions of combinations of concepts and stuff that we learned throughout the videos and if you can think if you can think up of any of these types of combinations yourself you like run blank out of ideas this is a situation where it makes sense to it would be helpful to look at other people's ready-made code and see how these other guys go about making different functionalities and different stuff in C++. And that should help you give you an idea about, you know, all these different combinations of stuff you can do in C++. That's how you're gonna realize, like, oh wow, could you really do that type of thing? Like, I didn't know you could combine uh, this thing with that thing, and together it makes a nice piece of functionality, which helps us in this situation or that situation. Though beware about looking at other people's code because while you may be learning different tricks and stuff which are well-known, well-used, recommended techniques, you may also be looking at badly designed C++ code and you wouldn't want to learn from uh, bad code and start getting used to bad habits and ways of uh, coding stuff. So learn the important lessons that there are to learn about other people's code and beware of all the rest of the garbage that you can 
get addicted to when looking at other people's code. And again, I have to apologize for not uh, providing myself uh, many practice projects for you viewers to practice on the forum. I'm just being totally useless in that area. So sorry about that. So whatever, just try to realize that many things that we learned can be combined with many other things that we learned. Right over here on this line, I am combining the concept of returning with calling a function, with passing in different types of variables, and using mathematical operators, using the random function, comparison operators, I'm using the ternary conditional operator, which is the question mark and the colon, and basically I'm combining a whole bunch of different C++ stuff which we learned, which you maybe wouldn't have imagined that it's possible and that it's valid uh, C++ code to use all of this different stuff as the return statement. You might have thought that maybe the return statement can only be some uh, static number like zero or maximum. It could be some variable with some mathematical calculation or something. Well, there you have it. You can pretty much com combine many, many concepts of C++ together to make things work like you'd like to. So as I said, you can discover lots of this stuff either by testing out yourself or uh, also by looking at other code which you can easily find online. There are countless websites out there which o offer uh, what's called open source uh, source code. You could probably find dozens of whatever calculator programs out there which you can have a look at the source code and see how they go about making a calculator program and all the neat tricks and shortcuts that they use in that in their code. But as you test things out and you look at other people's code, keep in mind that it's very important to stay very clear and clean in your in the typing of your source code. So for example, this line of code over here would be pretty confusing uh, in and of itself. You would probably like to separate all of this stuff into a couple of different lines, each one doing a separate command one at a time and then returning the end result. Or if you really have to combine it all into one line, at least you should add some comments explaining exactly what's going on and uh, you know, so that whoever is using, whoever is going to look at the code will understand what's flying. These videos are a nice starting point from which I try to teach you basic concepts and stuff about C++. However, it is by all means not at all complete. You yourself have to keep on trying things out and looking around, looking at other people's code, and you're going to suddenly find some new thing which you didn't see yet in any of the videos and you're gonna wonder, hey, what's that? We didn't learn about that in any of the videos, so what's going on? And of course, C++ is vast, it's humongous, there's so many things to know about C++ programming that pretty much no video tutorial or book could put it all in there. You'd have to look around and learn by practice and read up the actual basic rules of everything inside of the C++ standard the document that I showed you guys a different time. So it is definitely my intention that after watching these introductionary noob videos spoken in this very lame English, uh, you viewers should go ahead and review everything that was learned inside of the standard C++ document, inside of other C++ books, inside of code which other people may have typed up and that's how you guys could really complete the knowledge of everything we began learning about in these videos and you'll start learning picking up how to easily search different stuff on Google and how to ask and how to find information you need to know about a certain stuff in C++ and what are the real fancy words used by the standard C++ and anything and everything else there is to know about programming in C++.